So if you can reduce your risk by 90%, that means, you know, occasional some people even doing the right thing are going to, you know, get the bad result. I mean, that happens. That's the way it is. It's not black and white. But the evidence is so overwhelming. If I can reduce my risk by 90%, that's pretty good for all the disease at the same time. So that's, that is the, uh, that is the formula basically for whole food based diet. With the, with the implication of the fact that 10% of the people still get the, the disease, even though they're eating this wonderful diet, um, would the implication be that it's genetic, the, the, the of, of the diseases they get? Uh, partly that may be true. Uh, Angelina and Jolie, I think we talked about that before, you know, certain, certain genes uh, occasionally pop up to give higher risk for certain kinds of diseases. And if those people are more sensitive to doing the wrong thing, so they're going to, you know, have a higher risk for getting those diseases. But at the same time, uh, they also can reduce the risk of next to nothing. Uh, but they have to be really strict to it. They have to be, they have to work at it. They have to stay there. Don't, don't, don't stray. So the genes do play uh, some role uh, that's uh, inarguable. Uh, you know, we can have uh, some family traits and certain things, but it's so minor and there's such an exception compared to the average uh, population. And so I, I can't say that. And, and in our study, the one thing that really got me going on this whole thing early in my career was in our animal studies, quite frankly, when we... They start out with a gene predisposition, a genetic predisposition for getting cancer, all of them. But we could turn it off completely by nutritional means. I mean, that was pretty dramatic. Mm. And so, you know, nutrition is controlling gene expression. The alternative ex expression is genetic determinism, okay? And, and actually, the industry, the cancer industry, who's making chemotherapy, stuff like that, they rely on this concept of genetic determinism. They don't say it out loud very much, but they sure do say it. Let me tell you, the National Cancer Institute had that in the first line, uh, cancer is a genetic disease. <coughs> I, I uh, called attention to that. They took it down. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they did that because I, I had done that or not because I am fairly visible in that community. But in any case, uh, uh, Genetic determinants have been vastly overrated because it's what you, if you go around telling people, hey, you're, you know, we're all going to get disease one kind or another. If they say something like this, you know, what, what are you worried about? Uh, you know, if you got the genes, you're going to get the disease. That That's silly. But they argue the industry will argue that these diseases are genetically determined when it's not. They go to the other extreme. And say, don't worry about it. You know, what you want, if you're going to get a disease, you're going to get it. And uh, there's, those are very few and far between. Thank you. So, um, you know, there's an idea, and I, and you can correct me if this isn't accurate. Like with uh, with people who smoke cigarettes, for example, if they if they quit smoking cigarettes within seven years, they'll have the same health outcomes of somebody who's never smoked. I, I and I don't know the veracity of that, but conceptually, is there uh, um, you know, people oftentimes think they're they they're broken after being unhealthy for a long period of time. With a whole food plant based diet, over how long does it usually take for someone to have that vibrant health, and will they have the same health outcomes as uh, somebody who didn't do all that kind of damage themselves throughout their life after a while? That's a great question. That's a, a very germane question. Uh, I had to face it myself. My wife did too. I mean, as I said, I was in my early 50s and eating all the wrong food. Uh, and uh, so changing at that time for me was a bit of a challenge, but I was being convinced of our data. And my dad had died uh, at 70. He was otherwise a farmer and good and fit. And his brother at 58 of heart disease. And their, their father, my grandfather, was 73. So it was in my family. My wife's family, her mother passed at 51 from colon cancer. And then she lost two brothers in their fifties. So we had we had family issues to think about. So that encouraged us to be, take more seriously what we were doing. And uh, come in, but I was in, as I say, my early fifties when I changed. I thought maybe looking back, I thought it was a little bit late making change. It turns out it's not at all. It's uh, you know, it's you you can change 
uh, at uh, 60, 70, I think, 80. You can get some benefit out of it. And so, uh, and we, both of us, my wife and I, I'm speaking strictly in a number, N of two, <laughs> only two of us. Uh, mm -hmm. But reality now, I, I said, I'm 90, she's 83, and I don't take drugs and uh, should knock on wood, as I say. I mean, it's a crazy thing for me to say. And we're only two, doesn't prove a point whatsoever. But uh, that's what we tend to see. So as you you may know, you're extremely revered in, in this community. And um, and then there are a lot of you know, doctors out there, especially medical doctors who have their own spin on whole food plant based. So um, I think people would love to hear if but it's also very confusing for for lay people who, you know, who aren't you know, uh, nutritional biochemists. Right. I have to admit I'm not a biochemist. So um, we, I, I and I think the audience would love to hear if there are specific doctors out there or uh, dietitians that that you think are more spot on than others that um, that we should be listening to more so than others. And if there are any doctors out there that you think maybe are, um, you know, with all, you know, assuming that their you know, integrity is intact, are not necessarily leading people in the right direction. If there's any doctors that we should avoid. Um, it, you know, I don't know if you're comfortable answering a question like that, but if there's any doctors, I'm sure you're, you're fond of, uh, um, Dr. Esselstyn's work. Are there any other doctors out there that, that you would recommend, um, people listen to? Well, Dr. Dean Ornish, by the way, uh, in fact, he had, uh, you know, I, I took his uh, advice seriously. He was on the cover of Time magazine with his comments about heart disease, uh, actually before Esselstyn. And I got to know uh, Dean and uh, the publisher took his name and featured our books with his uh, his recommendation for the books throughout. So I, I owe him quite a bit. Uh, he didn't get stay in the community quite the way that Esselton did. Uh, Esselton came along and he, uh, about the same time more or less, but he uh, did his study. He, they, they were both of them, Ornish and Esselton, were doing their studies early on. They were both uh, calling it low fat. They didn't go to the area of protein. They just slow fat. And uh, they were both using dairy because it was so important. You know, you couldn't do without that. And I told him, I said, if, if I were you, I would stop the, the dairy. Well, Esther did stop. But uh, Orange did not completely change. Uh, and so, uh, and we've had this really personal, you know, very close personal relationship. You know, and, and Esther's stuff got published and everything got recognized. Um, he's a great guy. I, but one of the reasons I like him is not because of his, his uh, you know, understanding of nutrition and that sort of stuff. He's just a first class individual, you know, mm -hmm. very honorable person. Um, and, and that's what I mean, Orange is too. But uh, in terms of in naming others, uh, and I'm actually just now finishing up a book on that point, uh, I have become, I have to admit it, become very, very upset with the medical system. Uh, I've uh, and I've been close to it. I've spoken in medical schools and their conferences in more than forty states in this in the United States. Uh, and uh, I was actually a representative of the AMA for a little while, even though I have a PhD, not an MD. So I really got to know the medical community really extensively. 